Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. The final topic in Chapter 4, Long-Term Effects of Exercise or the Effects of Training. As always, we'll be following the Cambridge exam syllabus exactly, and our three learning objectives today are to identify what happens to the heart after training for a period of time, to understand the effects that changes to the heart have on the body, and to understand how blood is able to tolerate lactic acid. We're all aware that sustained exercise leads to an improvement in fitness. When we exercise regularly, we put stress on the systems, forcing them to adapt over time. This enables our body to perform its functions more efficiently, leading to improved Improvements in fitness and athletic performance. So what are the physiological changes that occur as a result of training and how do they influence fitness? We'll start by looking at how the heart responds to aerobic training or sustained periods of moderate intensity work. When we work continuously, the increased demand for oxygen in the working muscles forces the heart to work harder and eject more blood per beat. This causes the cardiac muscle or myocardia to become thicker and stronger over time and the size of the ventricles or heart chambers to become larger. These adaptations enable the heart to hold more blood and contract more forcefully, which means stroke volume or the volume of blood ejected from the heart per beat goes up. Trained athletes can therefore transport more oxygen to their working muscles during exercise, increasing the rate of energy production and enabling them to work at higher intensities and for longer periods of time. Elliot Kipchoge recently ran a marathon in under two hours and maintained an average pace of almost 22 kilometers an hour, partly due to the efficiency of his heart and his enormous stroke volume. Although many have tried to maintain this pace, most can't make it beyond a minute or two. Cardiac hypertrophy is the technical term for when the heart becomes larger due to training, and the greater stroke volume that results can lead to another, slightly less obvious adaptation. Since trained athletes can deliver more blood per beat, the heart doesn't need to contract as frequently to meet the body's demand for oxygen at rest, causing heart rate to slow. The technical term for this effect is bradycardia, or a resting heart rate below 60 beats per minute, which explains why endurance athletes often have a resting heart rate some 20 to 30 beats per minute lower than that of the general population. Here's a worked example to help you understand bradycardia a little bit more clearly. Two individuals both need to transport 4 litres of blood per minute at rest. Person A has a stroke volume of 50 millilitres, meaning their heart needs to be 80 times per minute if they're to deliver enough oxygen to their tissues. Person B, on the other hand, is a trained athlete with a much larger heart and a stroke volume of 80 millilitres. They only need to maintain a resting heart rate of 50 beats per minute to deliver the same volume of oxygen. We'll now move on to take a look at the effects of anaerobic exercise, or short bursts of high intensity activity. In topic 4.1, we learned that anaerobic respiration produces energy without oxygen, and lactic acid is released as a byproduct. Lactic acid causes our muscles to tire and lose their function, hence why we soon tire at high intensities. Training can help us build up a tolerance and break it down more quickly, however, which is one of the reasons why elite athletes can work at higher intensities for longer periods of time. To achieve this, we need to expose our muscles to lactic acid as much as possible during training. High intensity interval training, or HIT, is a great way of achieving this. It consists of short and repeated bursts of high intensity work, with some time to rest between each repetition so that the lactic acid that's accumulated can be removed. By training this way over a period of time, our body starts to build up a tolerance, enabling us to work harder for longer. When Usain Bolt began his transition from the 100 meters to longer sprints, building up a lactic acid tolerance would have been high on his list of priorities. Failing to do so would have caused him to fatigue and slow down sooner when running the 200 meters and his world record of 19.19 seconds may not stand today. Now we've just covered everything you need to know on the long-term effects of exercise. Applying what you've learned here to past exam questions should be your next step, and you can find a link to the Cambridge Past Paper database down in the description. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful, and I'll see you in the next one.